In this video, we're gonna take a closer look at the forward active mode, which we'll often just abbreviate with FAM. So the reason we wanna take a look at this forward active mode is because typically that's where we're going to want to bias our transistor. The reason is because that's the mode we want to be operating in if we're going to be amplifying the signal. And again, we're gonna come back in a later unit and talk more about how we do that. For this video though, we're gonna get back down to our semiconductor physics level and we're gonna see what's going on with our electrons and our holes. We're gonna start by considering an MPN transistor and what we're gonna see a little later on is that everything's sort of analogous for our PMP transistor. We just switch some polarities and we swap roles of electrons and holes. So thinking back to our previous video, we said that for our MPN transistor, if we want it in the forward active mode, we have to have these following two conditions met. We have to have a base emitter junction which is forward biased and a base collector junction which is reverse biased. And notice I'll often just use B sub E or B dash E for base emitter and B dash C for base collector. So in order to get a better idea of what's going on, let's take a look at a little bit more detailed diagram. So here I've got our NPN transistor represented by this sort of block here connected to some external circuitry. We have a couple of resistors, an emitter resistor and a collector resistor. We'll come back to why we need those and what exactly they're doing later on. But for right now, let's just sort of include them for completeness. And we have a couple of batteries as well. And we have a ground point or a reference point for our circuit. So first of all, let's consider sort of our base emitter and our base collector as two separate PN junctions. And so we remember that if we want to forward bias a PN junction, that our P has to be more positive and our N has to be more negative. So we wanted to forward bias our base emitter junction. And so we can see that that's what this VBB source is doing. So we're applying a positive bias to our P side and a negative bias or a relative negative bias to our N side. So we see that our BE junction so let me get rid of this here. So this right here is our BE junction. So we see that we have successfully forward biased it. And so remember in doing so, whenever we forward bias that, we create this depletion region. And so this depletion region is shown right here and so basically that's an area where we don't have any mobile charge carriers. We have our fixed uh, ionized dopants and so what that does is that creates an electric field and so in this case our electric field is pointing in this direction because remember it's the direction that a positive charge would go so we have an electric field like this now we wanted our BC junction reverse bias so that's just the opposite we want our N side of the PN diode to be more positive and our P side to be more negative and we see that this bias this VCC battery or voltage source is accomplishing that because we have the negative connected to our P side and the positive connected to our N side. So we see that our, let's see here, let's switch back to black. So this is our BC junction or our base collector junction. I keep wanting to write that incorrectly. Uh, we see that we've successfully reverse biased it with this configuration. And so again, we have this depletion region and we have an electric field. In this case, it is pointing in the opposite direction. And we talked about a little bit earlier in previous uh, units, but basically our depletion width is going to be larger in the reverse bias case, which is why I've sort of drawn it a little bit that way, uh, but we're not gonna be too concerned with specifics uh, in this video. Okay, so we've got these conditions. So let's think about what's going on now in terms of our our electrons and our holes within our BJT, with our bipolar junction transistor. So let's start on our, our emitter side and sort of work our way over to the collector side. So in our emitter side, so remember we have an excess of electrons over here in our n-type material, and we see we have this negative portion of our VBB connected to that n-type material. Well, so what that's going to do is that's going to repel electrons and it's going to push them in this direction. So we can say we're going to have what's called electron injection into our base. So electron injection. 
And so we're gonna talk about the details of it a little bit later, but let me go ahead and label some external currents to the device as well. So we're gonna end up having, as you might guess here with our emitter, a current going out in this direction. So that's going to be our emitter current I sub E. And so again, electrons flow in the opposite direction of conventional current. We're gonna see a little later on why, but we're gonna have a base current flowing into the device I sub B e, and a collector current I sub C also flowing into the device. Okay. So we've got these electrons being injected, and so we said that the, the VBB is injecting these electrons. So our VBB is injecting our electrons across that base emitter junction. And so notice that it's in the opposite direction that this electric field would send them, um, but that VBB is strong enough to sort of overcome that. So now once our electrons are in the base for reasons that are a little bit beyond the scope of our course, uh, at this edge of our depletion region of this junction, that concentration of electrons is going to go to approximately zero. So we can say our electron concentration at the edge of BC depletion region is approximately zero. So let's take a closer look then sort of what's going on in this region here in our base region between those two depletion regions. So I've got another figure sort of queued up here. So we've got sort of dot, dot, dot on either side as we're going towards our emitter and our collector. Um, but we see we have the two junctions represented here. And so we're injecting these electrons into our base. So right at sort of this edge of the depletion region off of our base emitter junction, we have a relatively high concentration of electrons because again, we're injecting them into, into our base. However, we've said that for reasons beyond what we can prove right now, that at this edge of our depletion region in our BC junction, that the concentration is approximately zero. So we can approximate a concentration throughout the base region and to keep things simple, we can say it's linear. Turns out it's not quite linear, but of course it's going to have this, this decreasing trend. So this would be our ideal electron concentration throughout our base. So what you might be recognizing and remembering from previous videos is here we have some concentration gradient and what that means is we're going to have a current flow or diffusion of electrons. So we have concentration gradient. And so what that means is our electrons are going to move from our base emitter junction towards our base collector junction. Okay, and so basically we can represent that up here. Let's put a big arrow, let's make it a little thicker. So we've got net electron movement going from left to right. And again, that's just due to that concentration gradient. Okay, and so of course, if this was a closed system, sort of just this base here, eventually it would level out and we'd have an equal sort of concentration throughout. However, remember, we're going to be continually injecting more electrons from our emitter hence the emitter, it's emitting electrons into our base. And then we also need to consider what's going to be happening to these electrons as they reach this depletion region in our base collector junction. So as we have an electron reach this area, uh, sort of keeping in mind it has a bit of a momentum going this way, uh, we also can keep in mind too that we have our electric field which is pointing in this direction. So remember that's the direction a positive charge would go which is the opposite direction that a, a negative charge would go. So what we're going to see is that once our electron reaches this base collector junction, it's going to be swept across into our collector region. So let's go ahead and write that down here. So we can say once our electrons reach that junction, so once electrons, catch up with myself there, reach our BC depletion region,
they are swept across and into the, into the collector. And so they're swept across by that electric field in the depletion region and into collector. So now hopefully these names are starting to make a little bit more sense. We're talking about an emitter, which is emitting electrons, a collector, which is collecting electrons. And we kind of related that to the current flow going on. So, but we need to sort of take a step back and say, well, really these are just two PN junctions. And when we were looking at PN junctions earlier, yeah, we had electrons moving, but we also had holes moving. And so that's true here as well. So if we focus for a second just on our forward bias P injunction, we know that we should have holes moving in the opposite directions of the electrons. And so what we're gonna see is that our, our base, so I guess let me come back up to this figure. So we are actually going to have holes being injected from our base. So this is going to be our holes. And so again, the reason that that's happening is we have this relatively positive voltage, which is going to be sort of pushing them that way. All right, so let's come down here and sort of adding to this, we can say we're going to have holes injected into our emitter from the base. Okay, and again, that's just because that was a forward bias P injunction. We know we're gonna have some whole movement as well. So I have one last diagram to sort of give us a better overall idea of what's going on with our charge carriers. So as we talked about, we have these electrons which are being emitted. And so that's not showing up there for some reason. So let me do, let's do this. So we have electrons which are being emitted from our emitter into our base. They go through based on diffusion into our collector. They get swept across that electric field at the depletion region and they get collected over here in our collector. So what we've not mentioned so far, we know we have some holes being sort of injected into our emitter from the base. So that's holes going in this direction. The other thing that we need to address though is that we are going to have some of these electrons in the base recombining with holes. And so that's what's indicated right here. So in that highlighted region right there, we have some recombination current. So we can say some of our minority carrier electrons in the base, because remember they're outnumbered by holes. So minority carrier electrons in the base. Write this down here, recombine. with holes. And so ultimately this reads, leads to a recombination current. So that's why we have those errors indicating a current. Uh, but it turns out that this isn't ideal. We wanna minimize that current as much as possible. And so one way that we can do that is we keep that base width small. So a small base width is going to minimize that recombination current. So it minimizes recombination current in the base. And we're gonna talk about in the next video how we can limit this current here being emitted uh, by the holes, hole emission into the emitter uh, just with our dopant concentrations. But ultimately what we see from this last figure is that we have both holes and electrons contributing to our current. So both holes and electrons create in our current, and that's where we get our bipolar part of the name in our bipolar junction transistor.